Hello architects and welcome to this week's video. So this week I'm going to be starting something new and as you may have seen from the thumbnail to this video I have got a big blue folder. So what's inside? Well for some time now I've been drawing and writing little children's books and I thought it would be really fun if we take it a step further and I show you the illustrations as I go along page by page to one of the stories I've chosen. So the first story is called A Toad in the Hole and today I'll be doing the front cover. So if you're ready, let's go. So here it is, the outline drawing for my front cover and I'm starting off by using some masking fluid. So first of all I'm using the masking fluid so that I can do the watercolour all over the inside of the picture and it won't affect the lettering. And I'm just applying it with my smudging tool. I prefer this to a paintbrush because it doesn't um, clog up and if you're using a paintbrush it does tend to spoil your paintbrushes. So I had done a couple of rough outs for a front cover previously when I first um, wrote the story and this was about five years ago now and I thought it seemed a bit of a waste to have all these little stories that I've written and partly illustrated um, just sitting in a folder doing nothing. So why not, I thought, let's see if we can get it looking more like a book and maybe even upload it as an ebook eventually to Amazon. So I decided to do watercolour because I had in my mind the idea I wanted for the picture was to be bright but sort of um, blended background and I thought watercolour was the way to go for this. So I started off by doing a um, just a wet wash so that I could do sort of a wet in wet method and began by doing a fairly light colour to start with all over the hole. That sounds really odd but the picture is actually of, or is meant to be, of a hole. And I had the idea that it would look like you were looking down into the hole so it would be darker in the middle and lighter around the outside. So while it was still wet I added more um, colour to the middle of the picture because this was going to be the darkest area and I really like the way that with wet on wet it just kind of merges together and once dry you can add more layers and darker colours and I really like the effect so that's what I was going for. So once I'd got the, I think it was grey or and black that I used initially, I went round the outside while it was still wet again and added a brown colour, very pale. Because at the top of the hole, um, I wanted it to look like sort of soil with grass growing around or over the edges. And once it was dry, I started colouring in some of the stones and just doing a mixture of different um, shades of grey and brown for this. And I used a fairly fine paintbrush as well, as you can see there. And once I was happy with the look of the hole, that sounds really strange, <laughs> I then moved on to the grass around the outside. So just to say I have absolutely no experience of, or training as it were, in illustrating or publishing or anything like that, but I have got a mad imagination and a really great
great desire to have something that I've created eventually on the shelf or as an ebook so that I can share what I've done with other people and hopefully they can enjoy it too. And when I first started doing these stories, um, many years ago, I did send some of the stories that I wrote off to publishers. Um, but being that um, I haven't got an agent or anything like that, there are quite a it's limited to how many people or who you can send your manuscripts as they're called um, to so without spending a lot of money um, on an agent I didn't get anywhere far with the publishers so they acknowledged that I sent them and they like my stories but quite often um, if you're sending things to publishers they have their own illustrators so even if they liked your story um, they would often use their own illustrators and not many publishers accept um, manuscripts where the author is the artist as well so it does make things a bit tricky but having said that there are people who have done it and an um, option if you can't get into publishing the traditional way I suppose is to self-publish now this is going to be a massive learning curve for me because again I don't have any experience with anything like that but I've got loads of books and there's always um, resources out there to find the information out and I think it's just a case of being persistent and being able to take knockbacks and criticism and people saying they don't like your work um, I think you've just got to kind of expect that and be strong and positive and believe in yourself which can be really hard because when you get letters back from publishers or from people who've seen your work and they're not really interested then it can be really frustrating and if you've put a lot of hard work and effort into it and you're really proud of it it can be it can be tough but I think I'm kind of past that now and I'm enjoying what I'm doing just because I'm enjoying it and I think ultimately of course I'd love to have something that's available to other people something that I can show my children and something that I can be proud of and say hey I published a book but at the end of the day even if it doesn't get published I've really enjoyed doing it and at least I can share it with you guys and you can let me know what you think you can be my critiques and decide for me whether it's any good or not the other thing is they always say that um, maybe when you're illustrating your own book only complete a few pages and there are certain layouts and things that you have to do um, to send things off in a certain way that they like to receive them and I suppose in doing this series of videos I'm going to be doing more than just two of the pictures um, but that's really because I like doing it and it makes me get it finished because there's so many things that we get busy with today and so in a way this is making me complete it for me as well as the possibility that I might send it away. So I think if there's anyone else out there who's trying to do the same then my advice with what little experience I've got is believe in yourself be tough expect people not to like it but don't give up and most of all enjoy what you're doing because it's a tough competitive business and at the end of the day if you don't get anywhere the main thing is you've enjoyed yourself along the way at least that's how I see it but if there's anyone out there who has got any advice 
then I'm all ears so please leave any comments in the box below I really appreciate that So coming to the end of the picture, um, I just decided to add a few more finishing touches with my colour pencils and I didn't want to add too much colour to the front cover, I wanted it to be a fairly limited palette so that it would kind of stand out and I did it in this sort of circle design um, because I didn't want it to be too busy and I quite like the idea that around the initial illustration on the front it would be quite plain because if you look on the bookshelves and in the library and um, in shops and everything there's so many children's books and they're all really bright and they're all beautifully illustrated and I wanted something to maybe stand out and I thought the contrast between the dark the yellow and the white background would maybe stand out on a shelf of other books. You will notice though, I haven't actually put my name on it or written anything <laughs> so far as who's written it and who's illustrated it, but I'm guessing that sort of thing that you can put in using Photoshop or something. Another thing that I've got to learn to do, because I don't know how to do that yet. But anyway, back to the picture, I just added a little bit of um, pastel around the outside and used my bubble tin plate because I really like that effect and it's a bit different, but I didn't want to overdo it so if it looks really faint, that's why. But I just wanted to have a little something there. for today architects hopefully you've enjoyed watching me paint the front cover to my story a toad in the hole if you have then don't forget to give this video a like comment and subscribe to my channel and join me next week where I'll be doing page one with a little bit of the story and hopefully I'll see you then